right, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Sotko here. Welcome back to another episode of Hey Mr. Sotko, what do you think of this? Rules are very, very simple. In the comments down below, you just say, Hey Mr. Sotko, what do you think of this? Followed by a cryptocurrency topic. I take those comments for the next video and then talk all about those questions. Uh, so before I begin today, I do want to say that I appreciate all of the comments on these videos and I try to get around to all of them eventually. Uh, but, um, you know, I get a lot of them, and I usually only do co two comments a day, so keep at it, guys. I really appreciate the comments, and we'll get to them sooner or later. Uh, so I had a three-day kind of mini-vacation, so I didn't make a, a, too many videos for the past couple days. Um, and also, I wanted to uh, catch up on some trading, because as we all know by now, the crypto market was very, very bearish for a while. And I had to wait till the price goes up just a little bit to start trading, and it's just about that time for me to begin trading again and uh, making some extra cash, you know, that kind of thing. Swapping deals around, daily scalping, that sort of deal. But the first question today comes from Air Johnson, which that kind of almost sounds familiar, um, like Air Jordan in a way, but uh, something else. But either way, he asks what I think of Profit Trailer. So, if you don't know what Profit Trailer is, we're going to talk about that real quick. Profit Trailer is a trading bot. So, you can go to ProfitTrailer.com and you can buy this bot. It is not free. Uh, there are some free bots on the internet that you can get. However, they're a little complicated to set up. They have a config file and you have to set up approximately when to buy and when to sell. You know, the trends of the bot in the configuration file and at what percentage you would like to hold on to things and when to sell things. And a lot of people, you know, use trading bots. So first of all, you know, I want to talk about how Wall Street happened, how Wall Street works, essentially, at the stock market. Uh, it's primarily trading bots anymore today. You know, the, 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 the traders that you see on TV in the New York Stock Exchange is a very, very small percentage of traders. And essentially, those traders, those live traders that you see are sort of a dying breed. Most stocks are traded via bots anymore, uh, you know, AI bots, what have you. And that's a good thing because AI can be smarter than people in some ways and faster and more uh, reactionary than people. However, that can be a bad thing because it doesn't necessarily think for itself. It was just programmed in such a way. So, for example, the Dow Jones, it was uh, about a week ago now. And I always get an itchy nose every time I start to record. It's, it's amazing how it works. But um, the Dow Jones about a week ago dropped the highest it had ever dropped in a one-day period. It was something like seven, 1,700 points, and then it ended at about uh, 1,100 points down. So what happened on that day? Well, there were some sell-offs during that day, and that is not necessarily unusual. However, it was um, slightly higher than usual, I guess. And so what happens is that the, the trading bots actually start to see that sell-off. And normally that's not going to be a big deal. They could have probably waited several hours and the price may have gone right back up to where it was. However, trading bots don't realize that most of the time. So as soon as the price starts to go down, it starts to feel that it is now a bearish market and those bots should short themselves. And uh, I'll talk about shorting in just a moment. So the bots shorted themselves and then more bots got into it and more and more and more and then it dipped really crazy like. So a normal person would have stopped selling at a certain point. However, a bot doesn't really necessarily know to do that. So it really dipped the price. So that's kind of where I want to get into with Profit Trailer in that you can buy this. Um, so we'll scroll through this. Uh, who are we? The number one Bitcoin trading bot gives you the ability to trade automatically using different exchanges in a fast and simple ways. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So that is an advantage because as a day trader, you can't trade all day. I mean, you have to sleep at some point, and when you go to sleep, that's when the price is going to dip, that's when the price is going to go up, and you might miss that. Uh, so multiple buy and sell strategies, uh, great community support, profits, make profits while you sleep, trail the trends with us. Uh, so feel free to check out the website. Um, you know, it's not like I'm getting paid to, to check this out, you know, or anything. Um, and I, 
you'll see why in just a moment here. So the pricing is that for one exchange, it is 0 0.03 Bitcoin for two exchanges, 0 0.063, 0 0.09. So it's just essentially higher and higher. And so 0 0.303 Bitcoin right about now is, uh, let's see, that'd be about $240 if I'm not uh, if I'm not too mistaken there. Uh, approximately, depends on when you watch this video, I suppose. So that's fairly expensive. So somebody that just has a few hundred dollars in crypto and likes to trade back and forth a little bit definitely shouldn't get any kind of bot like this because that's pretty much all of your crypto. But if you're dealing in tens of thousands, of course, that's not going to be a big deal for you. So what do I think about a trading bot? Well, first of all, uh, I actually have a, um, I don't even know if I'd call him a friend. It's a, 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 a this Chinese guy who gets a hold of me a lot. We have been friends on Steam for a while, but honestly never really played games together. And he, he would get a hold of me frequently and say, hey, I would, I, I'd, I'd pay you in Bitcoin to, uh, to promote my channel and to promote, pro to promote Profit Trailer. And uh, every time I'd be like, no, man, just, uh, you know, no, I'm not going to do that. Uh, I don't believe in trading bots for the most part. I feel if you're going to do it, just do it yourself. Uh, so here's why. Here's a big reason why. Um, so with Bitcoin, let's say Bitcoin is at $10,000 and it rises to $11,000. Well, you just made $1,000 there if you sold it at eleven. With day trading, sometimes you can actually short yourself a little bit on that profit. So let's say it's at $10,000 and the price just jumps 500 bucks. And you're like, wow, that was a huge jump. I'm going to sell now and wait for that price to go down a little bit. But so when you sold at 10500 and the price didn't go down, instead, the price kept going. So instead, you said to yourself, well, at $10,700, i am going to get back in and then continue writing it up. And let's say you sold it at seven or at $11,000. So that means that you missed about 200 bucks in there. So instead of making a thousand bucks, you made 800 bucks. So in a very, very bullish market, sometimes day trading is not the best bet because if you sell before that price rise finishes, you have actually cost yourself money rather than making you still made money, but you, you haven't made your maximum money by holding. So sometimes holding is the best bet. Also, in a bearish market going downwards, a bot is usually very poor, as I stated in the earlier part of the video, very poor at shorting itself in order to get into Bitcoin at a lower price. So let's talk about shorting. Shorting is, let's say that Bitcoin is at $15,000 and you bought in. It doesn't really matter how much you bought in, but you bought in at 15000 so let's say the price dips to 13,000 and you sell it. You you think to yourself, I think Bitcoin is absolutely crashing. It might go down to 8,000. I think it's going to go really low. So you sell at 13,000. And if you picked up Bitcoin back at 8,000 and then resold it back at 15,000, you actually made money. That's shorting and you picked up more Bitcoin than you even originally had and you did good. However, to even make to even break even with that if you sold it at 13,000 you would have to uh, pick it back up at at least 11,000 another 2,000 further so if it only went to 12,000 and you picked it back up you've lost money so shorting yourself is very difficult and a bot will find that very difficult as well and of course as it, it, it's your bot is, is as good as you program it to be but again, bots don't always make the best decisions. I have seen numerous articles and uh, demos of bots that have actually lost people money and not necessarily lost people money, but rather didn't make the profit as much as it could have. So let's say the bot buys in at 8,000, it sells at nine, and then and then it, it only gets back in at 9,500 and then it, and then it kind of sells. And, and so it's missing these little chunks throughout the time. So you would have actually made more money if you bought in at $8,000 and then sold it at $15,000 rather than just buying using a bot to just miss these little chunks here and there. Sure, you didn't have to do any work, but you could have actually made money just by simply hodling that Bitcoin. So if you if you don't think that you're a good day trader, if you are not making maximum profit with day trading, 
what I would recommend is to just simply buy in and wait and then hold it till a certain price that you might want to set for yourself. So this is why I have a problem with bots because they don't always make you more money than you can just by simply holding on to your Bitcoin and then selling it for $10,000 more than you actually bought it for. Whereas a bot would have missed these little tiny chunks in between. And eventually, um, when, when you get to the highest selling point, you have found that you didn't actually make that much money. You made a little bit less. And um, that's bots for you. So bots are kind of the lazy way to do it. And... If you can't if you can't day trade yourself, then a bot isn't going to be able to do it much better for you. Uh, I'm sure people have some good things to say about Profit Trailer and and bots, but overall, I think that bots are flawed, and they can be flawed. And if not programmed correctly, you can either a lose money or b not make as much profit as just simply holding the money and then selling it at a certain price higher. So that's what I think about Profit Trailer. Uh, so the next comment here comes from, and I actually had to just take this comment in, in a picture file here in a JPG because it was way too big to put on, uh, you know, my, my OBS and to show you guys live here. So, uh, it says, Mr. Sotko, I'm a newbie and I've enjoyed your channel with the way you have explained the different topics. Don't understand the whole mining GPU hardware thing, but I do have many videos on that. So maybe check those out. And if you still don't, you know, give me a message or something and maybe I can help you out with that. But thank you for explaining how the Litecoin fork coins were going to just appear on an exchange that adds Litecoin Cash. Or did I misunderstand? No, not necessarily. You did not misunderstand that. If Litecoin Cash turns out to not be a scammy coin, then uh, you didn't misunderstand that. And then maybe certain exchanges will pick it up and then you would be granted that coin if you have that Litecoin on that exchange. However, do not go out of your way and you know look up some article that says if you put your bitcoin if you put your litecoin here it will give you litecoin cash because that might likely be a scam if you have litecoin on a ledger nano will it, um it will not affect those correct uh actually incorrect it will affect those so um i brought up this article and i think this article can actually explain it a little bit better than i can and i usually bring up an article anyway to support my claims um Excuse me. Uh, so when it comes to the most popular cryptocurrency wallet, nothing beats the Ledger Nano S and Ledger Blue. Well, I don't know. Maybe. That's, I guess that's a matter of opinion, really. Um, Trezor Wallet is, is, I would say, just as good. But uh, either way, it's up to you on that one. So recently, Bitcoin Gold, and I know this is on Bitcoin Gold and not on Litecoin Fork, because really, Litecoin hasn't really had you know a fork. But let's talk about this, and this is pretty much the same thing. So recently, Bitcoin Gold was forked out of Bitcoin, and today the Ledger team launched support for Bitcoin Gold. So this article is a little bit old. Uh, it's from sept uh, November. So let's scroll down here and look. So uh, nevertheless, here's the guide you can follow, and I will update you as I hear more from the Ledger team and other members of the Coin Sutra community. Connect your Ledger Nano S or your Ledger Blue to your computer and open the Ledger Manager app. Uh, at the bottom of the screen, you'll see the option to install the Bitcoin Gold application. So now this isn't necessarily 100% to Litecoin. This again, this is this article is talking about Bitcoin and getting your Bitcoin Gold from that fork. But again, uh, you can relate this to the same thing. So basically, you would click install uh, when you see the Bitcoin Gold, uh, and I guess you can only have five applications on your ledger. So if you have one of those, you might have to remove those, unfortunately, and put, like like I said, Bitcoin Gold. Or if it happens to come out with Litecoin Cash, which I highly doubt it will, I'm just throwing this out there for anybody that um, has one of these, and maybe it will appear on it later on. Uh, and again, there is some controversy with Litecoin Cash. It could be a scam. And not to say that by holding Litecoin, you're going to get scammed. Of course not. Litecoin is one of the most scamless coins, in my opinion. But just don't go out of your way to buy Litecoin Cash or to put your Litecoin in some kind of shady uh, wallet in order to be granted Litecoin Cash. So just be careful with that, everybody. Uh, so now on your Ledger wallet, allow the installation. And if you see an error, unable to install application, you have insufficient um, 
And if you need to use more applications because you manage a lot of different coins, a ledger manager will be the interface. Even if it is a bit tedious, these steps only take a few seconds. And once the app is installed, open the Bitcoin Ledger app and open the Bitcoin Gold, open uh, the, the app on your ledger. At the bottom, you will see the option for the BTG split tool. And you click on that and then legacy, or if you hold your Bitcoin in a SegWit wallet, whichever, and then you can get your Bitcoin gold split. So now click on legacy or SegWit and we'll start syncing and give you access to your BTG. So that is pretty much that in a nutshell. And I want to talk about Litecoin Cash just one more time because I know some people are really confused on it. And then maybe I'll talk about uh, mining here just real quick for um, Stephanie Laurie. I I'm sorry, I almost forgot the name for a second there. Um, so Litecoin has been sworn really not to fork. Uh, the creator, Chris Lee, um, said that um, that he will never really fork Litecoin and that if anybody forks Litecoin, it's not his doing. So he, he does have a, a Twitter. I would, I would recommend following him on Twitter because he always gives updates on Litecoin and things like that. He's, a, he's usually a pretty genuine guy, at least according to his tweets. Don't know him personally, but at least according to his tweets, he seems really genuine. And he lets you know if he feels that anything is a scam. He has, he has stated that he feels that Litecoin Cash is a scam. Nobody can really find any information on Litecoin Cash, like the developers or the white paper or anything like that. Uh, so again, be very, very careful. Don't go out of your way to buy Litecoin Cash. There's no reason for you to do that. Um, and Litecoin Cash will use SHA-256, the Bitcoin mining algorithm instead of script, which is an odd choice because it's still an ASIC mining algorithm um, and it can be mined on GPU, but forget about it. It's basically useless. So it's a really interesting, odd choice. And I'm not sure why anybody would really fork Litecoin because there is nothing currently wrong with Litecoin inherently. Uh, it has quick transactions, low fees. Um, you know, if you, don't, if you just don't like Litecoin, then just don't use it. But there's really nothing inherently wrong with it. Not kind of, you know, like like Bitcoin kind of has some inherencies that are a little bit wrong with it. Um, sure, you can choose to put your Bitcoin on a SegWit wallet, but uh, once Bitcoin gets really high in price and more and more and more people start to use it, uh, its its memory pool fills up very quickly. And then you have this big latency uh, in terms of transactions with it, and that costs you a lot of money. So uh, they're working on that. The developers, here's the thing about Bitcoin developers is that they can't, force anybody to do anything and that's the crypto world that's the big difference between bitcoin and bitcoin cash so uh bcash they basically said this is what you're going to use and you're going to like it and they and they basically centralized it and they said this is what you're going to use you don't have a choice you're going to like what we give you and that's the huge difference that's the argument that nobody gives when they're defending bitcoin is that seg is that Bitcoin Cash just does what they want to do. Whereas the Bitcoin developers, they develop things and then they say, here, you can use this if you choose to use this. Uh, so, for example, Coinbase has not implemented SegWit um, and they're working on it now, but they have taken their real, real slow good time about doing it. That's not the Bitcoin developers doing that. That's Coinbase. That's that's uh, people implementing that for themselves. You can choose to put your Bitcoin in whatever wallet you want, whether it be a legacy or SegWit. So there, that's your choice. Now, in terms of mining, I'm just going to go over it really quick because I've done this uh, probably a dozen times on my channel for Stephanie here. If you have a GPU in your computer, meaning a graphics card, and you can just take the case off of your computer and look into it and you'll see a big old card in there where your monitor is plugged into. Don't have that? Well, you don't have a GPU and you probably can't mine unless you want to mine with your CPU, which I can't really recommend anybody mine with their CPU unless you're mining with your GPU and your CPU at the same time is just sort of a supplementary because CPU mining is borderline useless. It will not make you much. I mean, we're talking maybe 30, a dollar a day, maybe uh, 30 cents, a, a dollar a day, somewhere around there. It depends on the price of coins at the time. 
basically useless. Um, you can if you'd like, but again, I don't recommend it. You might as well just get a video card. However, I can't even recommend that right now because right now GPUs are you know, $1,300, $1,000 uh, because everybody's buying them and then reselling them. Sort of, they're, they're sort of price scalping. They're sort of price gouging, if you will. Um, right now, there's this huge demand for GPUs, and all the people that do currently have GPUs or are currently buying GPUs at MSRP value are just immediately reselling them uh, third party uh, at, for like thirteen hundred dollars. So a 1080 Ti, for example, should should cost you anywhere from seven hundred dollars to uh, $850. There are a few models that are much more expensive than that in, in, inherently because of, uh, because of their cooling systems or, or they're just, they're just playing a better card. But for the most part, a 1080 Ti should cost you anywhere from 700, about 850 bucks. We can even call it 900. Uh, and people are selling them for 1300 plus dollars. So if you were to go out and buy a GTX 1080 Ti right now, specifically for mining, it's probably not the best bet. Instead, you could take that three that thirteen hundred dollars and invest it onto an exchange and buy some coin and then trade it or even just hold it for however long you want till you feel that it's a good price for you to sell it and get your profit back or get your money back. And uh, that would probably be a better bet because at thirteen hundred dollars, uh, mining something, mining uh, you know. Um, on like Awesome Miner or something like that, a GTX 1080 Ti might make about seventeen hundred dollars a year, and you might think, well, that's pretty good profit. You know, that's like four hundred bucks. But you gotta you gotta understand that you know maybe that maybe the price of, of coin goes down by then. It might go up by then, which might make you a little bit more difficulty of the mining increases over time. Uh, you know, your hardware starts to break down, and you you might mine fractionally slower over time. So. I wouldn't really think about it of making an extra four hundred dollars if the price of crypto tripled or something like that by then. Yeah, you might make you might make a, a few hundred, you might even make a thousand bucks. But right now, it's just not all that worth it, and you'd probably be better off just taking that thirteen hundred dollars, putting it on exchange, and then waiting for the price to double or triple, and then you've made way more than just a few hundred extra bucks. But I hope you guys enjoyed this episode, and I will see you guys next time.